there's so much information here, it's important to read it very carefully. And I'm not going to preach on this really at all. But in this story, because I just preached on this a couple weeks ago, when it has to do with um, getting a divorce. So we see in this story that Joseph, when he finds out that Mary is with child, because he's espoused, as we see in verse 18, Mary was espoused to Joseph. They were married. That's, you know, you call it your, your husband, your wife, your spouse. She was espoused unto Joseph. But they had not yet consummated the marriage yet. So yes, they had been married, but no, it wasn't consummated yet. Obviously, because she was still a virgin when she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Of the Holy Ghost means it's from the Holy Ghost. And what Joseph wanted to do here, it says in verse 19, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. So the Bible says he was a just man. Just meaning he was following God's law, right? He wanted to obey the laws of God. And in the law of God, he didn't want to, although he could have, he didn't want to make her a public example. He didn't want to make a big show of this and a big deal. Oh, Mary's pregnant. Can you believe this? You know, I want, you know, we got married and she has a, you know, she's with child. I didn't know that, you know, whatever. And, and just make a big deal out of it and kind of drag her name down for playing a whore against him because that's what he would think, right? I mean, that's what any man would think. And except for this one situation, that would have been the case. But it says he wasn't, he didn't want to make a public example. He says, but he was minded to put her away privily. So he's thinking, you know what, though? I can't deal with this. I mean, she's, she's got a child from someone else and I don't think I want to be married to her anymore. So in God's law, if it was for fornication, which is what, something that would have happened before they came together, before they got married, that would have been acceptable in God's law for him to get a divorce. And that's the only time when it's acceptable in God's law to get a divorce. So I'm not going to go through all that because I, I just preached a couple weeks ago. If you're interested in that subject, you can look up the sermon. It's online. Um, but then an angel appears unto Joseph while he's thinking about all these things because obviously it's a big deal. I mean, if you just find out, man, my wife, like I just got married and my wife is pregnant and we haven't even come together yet. That's a big deal. It's pretty heavy. Bible says verse 20, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So he's saying, okay, Joseph, don't worry about this because it's actually of God. It's of the Holy Ghost is the reason why she's pregnant. Um, and that's actually the reason why, you know, Jesus Christ throughout the Bible in the New Testament, you're going to see he's referred to as the son of man. He's also referred to as the son of God. He's the son of man because he was born of a woman, a physical human being woman. He's a son of man. He was, he was a human being. He was here in the flesh. But he's the son of God because he was born of the Holy Ghost. Because it was the Holy Ghost that brought forth that conception that allowed for Jesus Christ to be born physically into this world. Therefore, he's the Son of God. And Luke 1.35 says, uh, it's basically recounting the same story. Luke 1.35 says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So he says, Therefore... That child, that thing that's going to be born, is going to be called the Son of God. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow thee, the power of the highest. And that's why uh, he's going to be born. And that's why he's going to be called the Son of God. So a lot of, I mean, some people you might run into are a little confused about, about you know, why is it that he's called the Son of Man, the Son of God? Well, that explains it very perfectly there. Now, I just want to point out one thing. Luke 1.35, where I just quoted, that is one reason why Jesus is called the Son of God. But that doesn't mean that that's the only reason why he's called the Son of God, and that doesn't mean that he, he only just first started becoming known as the Son of God when he was physically born. And there's, you know, we believe in the eternal sonship of Jesus Christ, 
that Jesus Christ enjoyed a relationship with God the Father, where Jesus as the Son going back to eternity past. And I've already preached a sermon on the eternal sonship of Christ when we started this church. And um, I think that's clearly what the Bible teaches. I just want to point that out because, yes, people on earth are going to call Jesus Christ the Son of God because he was um, born of the Holy Ghost. There is no denying that's what the Scripture says, absolutely. But there are other reasons why Jesus Christ is also referred to as the Son. I mean, even in the Old Testament, we see when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the burning, fiery furnace, and there was the fourth that was walking with them that was like the Son of God, right? There was a Son of God being referenced throughout the Old Testament. People knew it's the Son of God. It's not just because they were referring to the Holy Ghost coming upon somebody and giving birth. They didn't even realize that at that point. 